It's Monday, February 27th. I'm Sarah Fergani with Kent's 5 News Now. An overnight shooting outside a bar southwest of downtown leaves one person dead. Police say they have two people in custody. This all happened just before midnight at the Morales Ice House on Frio City Road. It started outside in the bar's parking lot but spilled inside once the man was shot. Officers say they found him shot multiple times. EMS tried saving him, but he died on scene. Investigators are still looking into what led to the shooting, and the bar closed right after. Meanwhile, a local man shot while driving down I-35 faces months of recovery. Police say the road rage shooter is still on the loose today. Cried for weeks, you know, every night. 43-year-old Joseph Alfaro told us it was the scariest night of his life. He was driving his company truck around midnight earlier this month when he tried merging on the I-35, and he says an 18-wheeler wouldn't let him in. That's when he honked his horn. Suddenly, the big rig driver shot through an open window. Alfaro was hit in the arms and legs and was rushed to the hospital. Crime Stoppers is now offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. A memorial service will be held today to pay tribute to San Antonio icon and philanthropist Red McCombs. The billionaire businessman died last Sunday at the age of 95. A huge crowd paying respects is expected to gather at the Tobin Center downtown for the service titled A Celebration of a Life Well Lived. The San Antonio Express News reporting Governor Greg Abbott and Spurs coach Greg Popovich will speak. McCombs was known for many things, among them creating a car dealership empire, bringing the Spurs to San Antonio, and donating tens of millions of dollars to organizations, including the MD Anderson Cancer Center. An overnight crash on Loop 1604 splits a motorcycle in half, and when investigators got to the crash site, they say the motorcyclist was possibly speeding when that person crashed in the car. He was taken to the hospital with multiple broken bones. The car's driver was not hurt. No word on anyone facing charges at this time. The wife of a man charged in a deadly dog attack is defending her husband. Abilene Moreno says her husband did everything by the book to keep the dogs from escaping their property. Right now, her husband is in jail on felony charges after his dogs mauled and killed an 81-year-old man outside of their home's fence. Three other people were wounded in that attack. Moreno says they never abused the dogs, but two of them have been involved in two bite cases in the neighborhood. They were taken by animal care services, and as a condition of release, they had to be neutered. Moreno says when the dogs returned, they seemed more aggressive. So you wanted to take them back to ACS? Yeah, we were, yeah, because I was like, you know, these dogs are really, they're not for us no more. Sorry for everything that happened. We never intended for anybody to get hurt. That deadly attack happened the next day the dogs returned home. We reached out to ACS and they say allowing the dogs to roam has a direct correlation to the incident, not the sterilization. The COVID-19 pandemic most likely came from a lab leak in China. That's the latest word from the Department of Energy. A senior U.S. intelligence official told the Wall Street Journal new information caused the department to make the updated assessment. The intelligence community has noted repeatedly that a lack of cooperation from Beijing has made it difficult to get to the bottom of where COVID-19 originated. The CDC is now warning people about the rising threat of a drug-resistant bacteria. It's called Shigella, and infections from it can cause a fever, abdominal cramping, and other serious stomach problems. This typically affects children, but the agency now says it has seen more cases in adults, and it's dangerous due to the few treatments that are available right now. In economy news, home sales are seeing growth. The sales of new homes rose more than 7% in January from December. It all comes at a time where overall home sales were dropping steadily for about a year. And we're currently in the longest period of decline since record keeping began in 1999. But builders are putting up new inventory online and are offering flexibility in pricing. Data also shows current owners are less likely to put their homes on the market now because so many have low interest rates. You can honor the San Marcos CISD community today by wearing purple. The district says it's in memory of an 11-year-old student hit and killed by a car in the parking lot last week. Purple is the school color for Goodnight Middle School, and now schools across Central Texas are wearing purple in show of love and support. San Marcos district leaders are asked, asked for continued prayers and said all secondary counselors are on site to help students and staff. 
Back here, the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo has wrapped up and all that dirt at the AT&T Center will be picked up today. Sunday was actually the last day after 18 days of roping, riding, music and a lot of food. The event raises money every year for scholarships and agriculture students. Check this out here. The grand champion steer was crowned over the weekend. There's her handler, Ashton Brooklyn Floyd from Denver City FFA, who took home that big prize. And a big congratulations to go along with that. That's a good looking steer right there. Let's check in with Paul Mireles for today's forecast. Hey, Paul. Hey, good morning. It is going to be a beautiful day today. Highs in the mid 80s, around 86. Lots of sunshine, mostly sunny skies. Once the sun goes down, temperatures will cool off, but really not a bad evening. Go out there and enjoy it. We'll be breezy today, though, so don't burn outdoors. And that's Ken's 5 News Now. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Sarah Fergani. I'll see you tomorrow.